Frank, how difficult was it to try to keep them from coming into the lane to really get their offense uh, flowing? Yeah, it's I, we we fought it at times, you know, but then you know we we don't understand how hard you have to play every single time, you know, and you know we we had great defensive possessions. I think they had three or four shot clock violations, but we also had some other ones where the guy on the ball just is a little tired, just not tough enough yet to to lock in and stay committed. And then he relaxes and, you know, their fifth-year seniors just said, I'm going. And, uh, you know, but I, I thought the difference in the game was, you know, which I don't know their team. I mean, I know their personnel. I coach against them every year and I watch them on film. But Mark East Reed uplifted the spirit of that basketball team. He made the other guys play better um, in the first half. You know, when he checked in, all of a sudden, the, the their, their, I don't want to say their spirit was not where it needed to be, but our spirit was really good. And then all of a sudden, he checks in the game, and he uplifts their spirit, and then that's, that's what we're fighting right now. When things get difficult, we tend to relax and, and get really quiet and non-competitive. And when you play any team, you, you, that can't happen. And that's, that's, uh, that's kind of... Uh, what we're fighting right now. Frank, uh, Brad talked about how different, you know, when you get in a tight game late, the difference you can see it with experienced guards yeah, and, and, and younger guys. Are you guys learning? I mean, there's a couple yeah. times though where, you know, you, you're in it against those experienced guards like Virginia, like today. And what do you think they've, they're gaining out of this stuff? Yeah, they, they came down, like, you know, every down the stretch there, we cut it to, I don't know if it ever got to four. I think it was five, five and six. And Marquis Reed would just kind of say, all right, I got to score. I, I can't let them get the ball back. And, and he'd just kind of get it to a spot and jump up and make a shot. And, uh, um, you know, we, 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 we tried to run something against the zone, that the, the zone that they were in that we were prepared for, and we make a bad decision. We, we threw it to the guy we said, don't throw it to that guy. But that's where my freshman threw it to. And, and I'm not trying to blame him. It's just I'm trying to – give you the difference with coaching freshmen or coaching seniors. Um, you know, and then the next time we we throw or we said throw it, and it's the one Chris kind of, you know, he's expecting the ball in his inside hand to shoot it, and we pass it to him over here. Now he's got to catch the ball. But, you know, and um, uh, just little things like that. That's a difference. That's a difference. Now that allows – a two-possession game to become a three-possession game with two minutes to go. And that's a huge, huge difference just on that little mistake. Are you hopeful that these last three games have you prepared for what you're about to face in the next coming weeks? Um. I just told the team in the locker room, Chris's freshman year, we were 15 and 0. Where'd that get us? It's all about league play. You don't you don't schedule to win. It's like recruiting. Okay? There's some people want to win the recruiting press conference. I can care less about how many stars we got on recruiting day. That that's irrelevant to me. You know, but we live in an era where winning the recruiting press conference is like the biggest race of all time. That, that to me is the biggest waste of money, time, and effort ever created. Okay, uh, I'm into uh, same thing. You know, I'm not into winning in November and claiming that we're a top 20 team in November. I mean, yeah, would I rather do it that way? Yes, but even when that's the place that you're at, it's all about your league. That's that's what it's all about, and it's getting guys ready. And that's what that's what you know. We go back to my first year here. I've said this a hundred times. We were ten and three, and we had an RPI with ten wins of like two hundred and forty or two hundred and fifty-six or something like that. That's how bad our schedule was. Guess what happened when we got in league play? I had no chance, you know, because we weren't ready. That's, that's that's all I've been talking to these guys about. Is that's. That's what we've worked real hard is to play on an even playing field against Sweet 16 teams with four fifth-year seniors. Against Virginia, the overall number one seed that returns basically 
every player. Uh, Michigan, who played in the national championship game and returns everyone but you know two guys, I want to say. Uh, that, that's that's why we schedule those kind of games. That's we we have to prepare to compete at that kind of effort and place on a consistent basis. You don't learn that playing inferior opponents. You don't learn that by tricking your guys. You learn that by going through it. So do I hope? Yes, I hope that's at the end of the day that's the end result. Has being undermanned created a silver lining for guys like Bryant and Frank to continue with their development? Uh, I guess for them, because I don't have a choice, so I have to keep playing them. You know what I mean? So it helps them. But it's also put them in a place where now they're responsible for winning and losing. You know, and um, that's, that's – so now that means they got to take ownership because using an ex, uh, a freshman or an injury or – whatever is an excuse as to why it's okay to lose, we'll figure out how to get better when we get healthy, that's a losing mentality. And uh, so for them, it's good because they have to play. They don't get to sit there and me not pay attention to them. They have to play. But it's also uh, difficult for them because it puts an unbelievable amount of responsibility on them because I'm not going to use it as an excuse to lose. So I'm going to expect them to grow up a lot faster than maybe they've ever been asked to grow up. And, and, and that's, that's the kind of pressure we try to create internally. But yes, I think they're dealing with this now. So when we get into league play, Justin's been through it. He gets it whenever he gets back. He's got, grow, he's got to get himself back to a comfortable place because of injury. Mike should be back when we get back from Christmas. Uh, you know, eventually, I think TJ gets back. Um, I don't know with him. There's no certainty yet. Um, but when those those guys get back, they got to get back to a place of comfort themselves personally. But the journey, they've been through it before, so so they're okay with that. And now these guys are learning what it takes in the journey. Um, looking at the numbers, I think they ended up hitting 69% uh, of their twos. That had been two point defense have been kind of a strength of this uh, this team thus far. In, in your mind, is that indicative of, of breakdowns on your end, or did their guys just maybe hit some tough shots kind of uh, near, the, near the rim? Marquis Reed made some real difficult shots, you know, and, you know, it's a, it's a he, he, you know, um, they're fifth year seniors. They, they don't panic. They get to their spots and they jump up and shoot it. That's what older guys do. They, the difference between a young guy and an old guy it's re offensively is real simple. Young guys don't know what their spots are, old guys do. Old guys find their spot, and when they get to it, I don't care what you do defensively, they're very comfortable. Young guys are trying to just kind of, let me go score. They got no idea how to score. Uh, and that's that's the, the, the biggest, big. Cinderius Thornwell, 30% shooter as a freshman and sophomore, player of the year as a senior, he learned how to work at it, and then he learned how to get to his spots. And when he got to his spots, he, he was lights out. Uh, uh, PJ did that too. You know, I'm talking about guys that play with the ball in their hands. PJ did that too. It's uh, Marquise Reed, Eli Thomas, same thing. He made a jump hook today where Chris, I can't ask Chris to defend it any better. And he just made it. I mean, but he was at his spot. And um, so, um, you know, I, I don't know. It's, I, I've been really, we struggle guarding the ball. That's what we struggle at. Our guards just, they're not very good at it. I'm not going to bail them out by playing soft zone to protect that because then people are going to dissect us and control tempo of the game and that's not what we've built this program on. We got to keep fighting to grow there. Keep fighting. I'll manage it in games best I can. That's why three point field goal percentage defense is not very good because we, we struggle keeping the ball in front of us so we're constantly on rotation. I thought our rotations today were the best they've been all year. Give them credit. You know, they, 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 they made some hard shots with them. Frank, I think it's only one game over the next two weeks. Potentially, could Moss be back, or is he going to be out no, of the No, no. TJ won't be back for a while. Yeah, TJ, uh, those high ankle sprains. I, I, I'm not, I don't pretend to be a doctor or, or, or a trainer or guess and all that, but I've rarely seen somebody come back before four or five weeks on a high ankle sprain. Those things are, those, those are not good. Oh. <laughs> two questions. Hey, Dave, good to yeah. see you. See you, sir. Uh, two quick questions. Um, you don't look like a Dave. I don't look like a Dave. I know. <laughs> Thank goodness. Thank goodness. Oh, How close God. was Coach Sardar to
perhaps being ready today. No, uh, he wasn't. Not even close? No. Okay. Number no. two, when you guys cut the lead from 16 to 5, in your eyes, how good was the basketball you were playing during that stretch? Yeah, that's, that's, that's who we're fighting to become and be able to but, – but to do that, we had to play really disciplined and really hard. And we don't understand that yet. We can do that for pockets. We did that for pockets against Michigan. We did it for pockets against Virginia. We obviously did it here today. But those teams play that way for very close to 40 minutes. We don't comprehend that yet. And then what happens is when we, we don't play with sustaining that kind of effort and discipline, those two, three minutes, those, those three teams that, we, that have just beaten us, that's when they kick your you know what because they stay the course. And then when you let the foot off the pedal a little bit, they attack you. And then all of a sudden, a three, four point game becomes 12, 13, and now you're climbing an uphill battle against a sweet 16 team, a second ranked team, a third ranked team. That's a difficult, that's a, that's a difficult you know, mountain to climb there. And we're trying to figure that out. Uh, Frank, you talked about it the last couple of weeks, just creating that internal pressure. When you have guys like this in the situation with you know, other players injured, how do you kind of manage some of those guys in the sense of not having to you know, outplay what they have to do, try to do a little bit too much because they feel like they might have to step up a little bit more? Yeah, it's like you, know, you remember injuries and suspensions are one and the same. Okay, So when Sin got suspended, Dwayne and PJ have been through it before. Justin Mackey's been through it before. So we had guys that understood what they're capable of doing and what they're not capable of doing. They understood how we play. Then it was me as a coach, as we went through that, I think it was six game period, to, to tweak some things and change some things around to get them to understand how we had to adjust without sin on the court. When you got young guys, they like they don't here's what I struggle with a coach tell I struggle with this as a human being telling people don't do that because then they're in a game and they got to do it and they're passive and they won't do it so I struggle struggle telling uh, my whole career telling players don't shoot because then the game starts and he's got to shoot and he's in his head saying, this guy don't want me to shoot the ball. I, I mean, so it's, that's my internal struggle as a coach. I battle that a lot. Uh, uh, but, you know, we, we just got to keep fighting. You know, we got to keep fighting. And they got to keep learning. And, and you know, I, I, I really, really like this team. I've told you guys that from the word go. I really like this team. I like, this, I like the people on this team. I like the makeup of this team. Um, uh, I'm excited for the growth that we've shown. If you, if you really take uh, Wyoming out, think about where we were at November 1st and think about where we're at right now. Even with the adversity that's hit our team through injuries, we're, we're a much different team. And so I'm really excited about where we're at and where we're headed. The problem is it's not fun when you lose and you got to sit here and answer questions after losses. Uh, but the excitement about the kids, their character, who they are, uh, their, 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 their willingness to continue to come in and fight to grow, I, I really, really like that. I like where we're headed. Okay. Uh, for Manaya, is there a timetable at all? Mm, I don't know if there's a timetable. Uh, uh, but, you know, I saw him shooting some balls on the side yesterday. And uh, I, I – do you think he'd be there for the opener? No. Nah. January 5th? Yeah. No, I think that's wishful thinking. Okay. I think that's wishful thinking. Uh, getting back to what I feel asked a little bit when he got it from 16 to 5, there was a stretch there where Keyshawn has the dunk, AJ kind of threw ahead in transition. They called timeout, and you Close. were as emotional yeah. as you've been maybe all season yeah. going in that huddle. What was – It's fun. But what was that like, <laughs> kind of that high and then that huddle? Was that kind of a moment in time? It was where fun, and we came out of that huddle and played the game the right way. You know, we did, and and uh, uh, we just, you know, it, it's that's fun. That's 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 what you fight to build is to to get kids to understand the resolve and how hard they got to play, so the other team doesn't break your spirit, but instead you stand there and say, "No, I'm coming after your spirit," and and that was the first time this year that I felt we've had that moment 
We were, we were creating loose balls defensively. We were guarding. We had them kind of scrambling. And there was changing defenses, too. So that means different assignments while the game was going on. Yet our guys were on it. And they, they, weren't, they weren't like one guy disconnected. And it was fun. It was fun to, 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 to watch us in that stretch because it's probably the best stretch of basketball we've played this year. And, um, and you know, and then we just weren't quite good enough to close the game. I mean, you know, Felipe misses that little shot from the SEC. He misses the little eight-foot shot from the left baseline there. Marquise Reed dribbles down and puts Sonny on his shoulder and just jumps over the top and makes a 17-footer. You understand what I'm saying? And that's the difference between Felipe makes that shot, it's three. You know, instead he misses and Marquise makes a real hard shot and now it's seven. And um, so, but it, it, it's, it is what it is. It's uh uh, that was a fun, fun segment for for our team. A couple of things on AJ. He he started out two for four, hit a couple of threes. I think yeah. finished zero for eleven. Did they did Clemson do something different with him? And how do you manage him offensively when when things aren't going real well? But it also seemed like he kept up his intensity on the defensive yeah, end. Does that speak to to his engagement? That's that's that that was going to be my answer to you, John. Um, um, I thought he grew up today. Because he stayed aggressive on offense and stayed aggressive on defense, um, you know there was a couple times like he had that one turnover right in front of me late in the game. He just had a freshman moment at point guard. He the, Clemson's been in the zone for like four straight minutes, and we've been running something to attack the zone, and then all of a sudden, he just kind of just called something that we run against man, and caught himself. And Marquise Reed's guarding him. And as soon as Marquise Reed, he caught himself, he called it. And then he was like, oh, no. Uh. And Marquise Reed just took the ball from him. And, uh, you know, and, but, but I thought he guarded really hard. I thought he played really hard. I thought he, he uh, I think he had like seven rebounds or something like that. that that's, you know, uh, those are the things that he's capable of doing. Now we need him to score. He took 15 shots, I think. He's got to make some. Got, you know, that's, him and Sonny got to be able to score for us to win. They have to make shots, uh, whether it's pull-up shots or driving to the basket or free throws or threes. They got to make shots for us to be able to win. Thank you. Merry Christmas.